Hey there, and welcome to Insomniac Live. This is your show where folks from Insomniac Games play different video games, and uh, we've got a fun show this week. My name is James Stevenson, I'm the community director at Insomniac Games. We've got two great guests today, both new to the show, <laughs> in the room for the first time. Ryan, you may have sounded the very first show for a little bit. I was right. Ryan Schneider, Chief Brand Officer at Insomniac Games. And Shane McCloskey? McCloskey? McCloskey. McCloskey, McCloskey. McCloskey? Okay, yeah. I got it right. Yeah, close, close enough. enough. Mm -hmm. We're within 95 percentile yeah, or something. Yeah, you got it. Uh, associate designer, right? Yes, sir. Yep. Cool, here at Insomniac Games. Mm -hmm. And uh, today is um, today's a day of remembrance. Um, technically tomorrow is, but it's observed today uh, for a lot of companies. Um, today's Veterans Day. And as um, a kid who's a son of an uh, Air Force veteran, grandson of an Air Force veteran, um, my brother is in the Air Force, my cousin, everyone in my dad's family, um, people in my mom's, and you know, I have several uncles that were in the Navy and stuff as well. So a lot of veterans in my family. I know, Ryan, you have a lot of veterans in your family. I do. Uh, my dad's a Marine. My grandfather was in the Army, uh, stationed uh, statewide, uh, stateside in uh, World War II. So absolutely. Um, Chan, I don't know if you. We didn't. I didn't get a chance to ask you. Not really. Mainly grandparents. Korean War, Vietnam. But yeah. No more really immediate family. Mainly blue collar guys. Like yeah. My my years. my grandfather was in the Air Force. He's the first person to ever bail out in the middle of the Atlantic and survive. Really? Wow. Yeah. He's picked up by a Norwegian freighter. So random Crazy. story. Um, my grandfather's best friend was among the team that packed uh, President George Bush's parachute when uh -huh. he. Uh, had to bail over, I think it was over the Pacific, mm -hmm. uh, very early in World War II. And they wound up being pen pals. Nice. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Wow. Um, so anyway, just a day to think about that. Um, so we're playing Call of Duty, and not to say that Call of Duty means remembering veterans necessarily, but uh, there's definitely some powerful imagery. I've only played a little bit of Call of Duty World War II that kind of, you know, I know it's a game, and that's not exactly the same thing as thinking about what the people were who were on those beaches and World War II went through, but um, there's still, I think, some powerful imagery and a little bit of a connection there. But we also wanted to kind of try and raise some awareness and donate to the Wounded Warrior Project. It's a, a charity we've worked with here at Insomniac and Ted's worked with. Um, so basically, over the course of this stream, if you haven't followed us on Twitch yet, click the follow button. Every person that follows, we're gonna donate $50 to the Wounded Warrior Project, up to 100 followers, so we'll do up to a $5,000 donation. So you guys have this bit of time to click that follow button, tell your friends to come check the stream out if they want. Uh, hopefully you like what you see uh, and come back for some more. We've got great shows next week. We're gonna play Horizon Zero Dawn's new DLC. We're gonna play uh, some Resistance 3 with Marcus Smith. We're gonna yes. pick that back up, which is fun. And then we're also gonna play Star Wars Battlefront 2 next week. So we have some fun streams next week as well. Um, so if you click that follow button, you'll know all about them. Uh, and uh, definitely click follow. Uh, Jerusik, I saw, is the first follower during the stream, so thank you for following. Uh, appreciate that, and like I said, $50 to the Wounded Warrior Project uh, for every follower during the stream today, so definitely check that out. And with that all said, I think we'll launch into it and start the first mission, which right. as any uh, good World of War II Call of Duty game ends up on D-Day, um, you may want to go to recruit. I'm just you sure. N uh, well, say, man. All right, you can try. Pretty decent but, at COD. All right, all right. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm. I. Uh, I saw I you guys did. struggling with Wolfenstein the other day. Yeah, well, we anybody would have struggled with no. Wolfenstein <laughs> at that level. We yeah. were turned up to hard thanks to Justin back there on Come Wolfenstein on, on, man. on Wednesday. So uh, uh, Adam the Gamer sixty six. Uh, I have Beast Blood and Wasted Under. Thank you all for the follows, and that's another hundred fifty bucks for the Warrior Project. Cool. So. Cool. That's awesome, and um, this game, Call of Duty World War II, is developed by Sledgehammer Games, and uh, I don't know who, if any of the other studios helped them on it, but I know they were sort of the main dev on it, and there's a lot of folks that work on Call of Duty, yep. right. so um, that's awesome, and a quick shout out to our good friends at Step 3 PR, Neil Wood and the gang, they uh, hooked us up with a code, so... Thank you. We were able to uh, download the game for the stream, which is awesome. So thanks, Neil. And shout out to uh, John Horsley if he's watching as well. Uh, we worked with John when he was at EA uh, when we were working on Fuse. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Very nice. Um, I don't know who Jerusik is. He said, take a picture of me with Indian food next time with your iPhone 10. You got an uh, iPhone 10? 
Oh yeah. Oh, bro, I'm jealous. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Right. James is what the kids called early adopter. Oh yes, man, I'm, I'm, it's all about I'm that it. bleeding edge. Standing on. Uh, I guess there's they've been joking in the chat about the Indian food. Today is Indian food day at Insomniac, and um, that means it's a five, a too spicy it's a five for bathroom yeah. uh, alarm fire. Yeah, basically. it's bad. Well, we recently discovered that the there was some issues. There was a, a ventilation fan that wasn't <laughs> working. Fortunately, that has been repaired. The and email the thread. Has, oh, yeah. yeah the that was a great email thread. That email thread yeah, was ridiculous. It was a pretty <laughs> epic email thread. That, Almost yeah. as good as the music uh, in the bathroom yeah. email thread God. from a couple years ago, <laughs> or a year ago. I heard all about that. Uh, that was outstanding. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, Tomb Raiders 11, thanks for the follow. We appreciate that very much. Another 50 bucks Wounded Warrior Project. And you can check out Wounded Warrior at WoundedWarriorProject.org or they're on Twitter at WWP is their oh, username. So uh, it's worth uh, checking out. But let your friends know about the stream. Have them join in. So we're in the... Oh, you know, there's going to be a whole sort of opening. This is a fan of Band of Brothers, Ryan. I think you would enjoy this opening scene because I've been it watching it with you. an eye towards that especially this part because it sort of lets you get to know the guys okay. um, it's actually there's actually I'm sure you remember this from Band of Brothers like they have this there there are scenes that are very similar to this as they take the boat from uh, New York City over to uh, England for their uh, staging area prior to uh, the Normandy invasion and yes, that is. Band of Brothers is, for me, the best miniseries of all time that I've ever seen. And living in LA, like, I usually try to leave celebrities alone and I don't go up and talk to people. But if they were in Band of Brothers, like, it's it's on. Like, see Captain Sobel? You gotta go say hi. I would. I, abso <laughs> I absolutely would. And in yeah. fact, we were at Farmer's Market a couple weeks ago and uh, the character who played uh, Bull Rambleman, uh, Michael Cudlitz, was there. Oh, nice. And, like, I got it. I got who was it. the lead captain again? I oh, well, that was uh, Damian Lewis, who was a yeah. fantastic actor. He went on to uh, be in Homeland. Yep, yep. Uh, was it uh, Billions? Billions? Yeah. 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 He's in Billions now. What was yeah. his name in the show? Captain Winners. Captain Winners. Yeah, he was, he was awesome. I think he wound up being Major Winners. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a hell of a show, man. I'm sure, uh, what's it called? Spielberg? What's that movie? Uh, Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, I'm sure that was a huge reference point for this as well. Sure. Yeah. Especially with this first mission. Yeah. yeah, this this definitely. Um, I really like how this scene was done. I think it's like, you know, you get, like I said, you get those characters in. It's another crew. Well, five finger fillet. Yeah. That's right. Five finger fillet. Is that right? That's yeah. right. That's what they do. Right? Dude in Red Dead. You know. uh, the game audio is super low for them, Corey. According to the chat, I don't know if you're seeing that. I see uh, K Tiger thirty four asking about uh, the story behind the music in the bathroom, and huh. I suppose the only way to cover that with some semblance of decorum is that uh, sometimes music is better than the other ambient audio you might hear in a restroom. Say the least, yeah. yeah. A real <laughs> wow, he really, he looks like Josh Duhamel there too. Oh yeah, it's a dude from Transformers. Oh, otherwise known as uh, Fergie's husband. Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing, there you go. Yeah, I, heard they they divorced really... I, heard, I heard they got divorced. What? That's what I heard. Wait, so Corey, you're Corey, I got a chance. Yeah, <laughs> she's back out there, man. Wait, Corey, are they together or divorced? Ryan needs to know, apparently. Corey, no, no. Google it. Check, check the <laughs> tape. Just, this is their divorce. All right, great. The stream was cut out or something. No, we need to know important information about Fergie. We got priorities, man. Uh, she had an on-stage incident. That's the last I remember about her. Yikes. I think, like, just... You know, the whole... The situation in terms of coming, you know, just crossing that channel in this on yeah. in France is just, you know, I couldn't even imagine. Well, the other side of it too is uh, all the diversionary tactics that went into this very scene, where you know, the I believe the uh, the Brits and even uh, the Americans banded together, where they tried to convince the Nazis that uh, the invasion was actually going to be coming from a different location as far north as, uh, I want to say, like Norway or something like that. They, they had uh, an entire, like, they, they were making wooden, um, like, wooden bunkers and, like, wooden ships and wooden tanks, and they would leak out, like, fake, uh, what do you call it, like, like fake spy uh, photography to, like, kind of throw the Germans off of what was coming, too. And then just imagine, 
like just like in Band of Brothers, it was it was the same thing. Like you're gonna go June fourth. No, you're going June fifth. No, you're gonna go later in June fifth. Like how many times? God. You know, these guys are wearing. How, I mean, the packs that they're wearing are close it's to like, hundred pounds. I was gonna say, man. Because right, they have to take all the supplies. Mm-hmm. And they all jump over the sides and just yeah. rip it all off. Or else they'll drown in the water. Yeah. And then you know, I remember you know in Band of Brothers uh, as well. It's like they had to take all the uh, anti nausea pills that they had never taken before, oh, and it was yeah. making everybody sleepy too. Yep. It's now or never. Then when you look at stuff like this, uh, hey, you think back to I don't you know this maybe I don't know this might be before your time, but you think back to like Medal of Honor Frontline or something, uh, which I'm sure yeah. they studied. You know the sledgehammer guys studied heavily going in, probably uh, at some level looking at it uh, for the Normandy invasion. Right. How far? Uh, game development has come. Oh my god, it's yeah, crazy. I mean, you've seen, you know, it's, it's obviously something that's been shown in games and movies yeah. and TV shows and exactly. um, a, a bunch of different ways, so, but this is definitely like a, and I haven't played a lot of the game, but I did play uh, the first probably half an hour uh, the other night just to kind of get a feel for what we would be seeing, and um, it's definitely a powerful recreation of it, you know, with higher fidelity, higher and higher fidelity of things. Uh, that we're getting to. Oh, shit, here we go. Yeah. Alright, stay frosty, Shane. <laughs> yeah, man, we haven't seen, like, a good World War II game since, like, PS2, I think, right? Or early PS3, maybe? PS3, you know, you had World at War. Yeah. Um, okay. And you had, I think, the Pacific. There was a Pacific Theater, or maybe that was the Pacific That was, theater well, there was a Medal of Honor Pacific game, too. Yeah. Was, I want to say that was PS2. But it was early PS3 era where, like, people, I think, like, when Call of Duty 4 came yeah. out, you kind of got, just people got past it. Yeah. Um, or maybe it was the second Call of Duty. After that point, you didn't really see any World War II shooters yeah. for a while. I know Battlefield did World War One sort of, yep. um, mm-hmm. recently. I, I've been saying, and it's funny, I've always joked for probably like the last seven or eight years, like as modern shooters became more and more, I was like, man, I really, you know, for a while World War II shooters were all the shooters. It was just everything is a World War II shooter. Mm-hmm. Even if you think about Resistance, well, man, like it's not World War II, but it's kind of, kind of. Well, it was, it was like, supposed to be World War One originally. Right, and then yeah. it slipped past and then it became the 50s, so you essentially had all the World War II weapons because World War II weapons are more... Yeah. Gameplay interesting, I guess, than you know, single shot fire. You have more machine guns, you have more stuff to work with. Then, of course, you know, we need alien weapons to yeah. meet up with Ratchet and Clank for resistance. But, um, I mean, this is this is it's so hard to watch. Oh God. Uh, it, it's, I, the side. I visited uh, Normandy on a backpacking trip and we went out, we went out into the shoreline at low tide and just to see how far you had to progress. To get on shore with with how high those hills are and how fortified the bunkers are, I mean, it is for these guys to run forward the way that they did. In especially, I think it was like the, the first division that went through. Like there was like ninety percent casualties like, for the first uh, wave of American troops that went in. Yeah, uh, Jesus. It's just it's just beyond humbling that level of heroism. Yeah, I can never do it. Yeah. Well, you don't know. You, you don't know uh, if you can or can't. I mean, none of us know until we right. do it. Uh, yeah. I think we all spend uh, a portion of our you know, lives, for me, yes, probably my, a younger portion of my life, uh, thinking, what would I have done? Right. You know, and I don't know. I, I don't yeah. know. Until you're in that position, you know. I, I've, I've spoken with veterans who say the people who ask themselves, what would I do? were more likely to survive because they had a more uh, they had more circumspect way of looking at it versus I would kick a lot of ass and take mm-hmm. a lot of names because that's not, that's just, right. until you're actually in something uh, as, as horrible as this, you really don't know. Right. You're not trying to go out to be a hero. Mm-hmm. Now, um, one of the things gameplay-wise that is different from other Call of Duty games is you don't have returning health. I was gonna say, man, health packs. What is this? Yeah, so this you have to cool. actually, you actually have to get up this beach by using cover. This there's is no, crazy. there's no like just make a little bit recharge your health. Yeah, like no, the more mistakes you make in terms of that. Oh, <laughs> all right, there's the, one. The more mistakes you make in terms of yeah. getting up the beach. Uh, the quicker you die, the, you die. You will die trying to get up this beach. And I actually thought it was really interesting, like how, you know, I mean, 
I, you know, a lot of Call of Duty games started with things where, you know, you were very much, you know, in a base learning or going through right. the training Right, good tutorials. Yeah, yeah. Account right. tutorials. And so this good. game starts you, like, right in the thick of the most, you know, famous battle um, yeah. of World War II. And then also, in a way where, really, the first thing you learn is you're going to die if you don't take cover. Yep. And right. you don't wait for them to reload. Uh, there's nothing to shoot at. It's just literally you're put into this slaughter box that American yep. soldiers went through, American and British and Allied soldiers. And Canadian and Aussie, yep. Yeah. yeah, I'd read uh, going into the stream, which I haven't had a chance to play the game yet, but I, I, I'd read that it definitely rewards you for uh, working with your squad mates and, and fire team mates. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. I like that dive animation, too. It's yeah. cool. Yeah. I like the detail of the sand. Yeah, I, yeah, the game is beautiful. Like, the I mean, when you were talking about when you saw the guys in the in the cutscene, like just the, the the head scans they've done and their their uh, the textures, of the skin textures, and just all tremendous. Just looks looks great. Um, Shane says he's an expert uh, genius Call of Duty player. I don't know about that. I've played every campaign since like Modern Warfare One, I think. So I'll do all right. I really actually. Um, I know a lot of people. I played. I loved Infinite Warfare. I thought Infinite Warfare was true. Yeah, yeah. That was probably my favorite campaign yeah. since Modern Warfare. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the original. It, Call of Duty Four was like seminal, but yeah. I also, I mean, I liked, I liked Black Ops Two. Yeah, it was cool, yeah. man. I liked that campaign. I mean, it was super trippy, but yeah. I dug it. It wasn't quite as grounded as COD Four, but it's still good. Right. Yeah, I mean, I still remember. I was so shocked when uh, Price bought it. Just like, oh, yeah, yeah. I yep. see that. Mm -hmm. uh, Death Badger said, can you guys do me a favor and ask Sony to let you make a uh, new Resistance game? Uh, well, you can ask them, too, because, you know, if fans tell Sony they want more Resistance, that uh, oh, that will obviously matter. Uh, we loved making Resistance. We had a good time with it. It's not something we're focused on right now, but you never know what can happen in the future. Uh, if you're just joining us, this is Insomniac Live. We're playing Call of Duty World War II today, which is from Sledgehammer Games. came out last oh, week. Um, I'm here with Chief Brand Officer Ryan Schneider and uh, Associate Designer Shane McCloskey. Did I say that right again? Yeah. McCloskey, right. McCloskey. I say McCloskey. My family says McCloskey and they yell at me every time for McCloskey, it. McCloskey, McCloskey, yeah. McCloskey. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, we had, we're doing a, we're kind of trying to raise awareness and funds for the Wounded Warrior Project today. Uh, you can check them out at woundedwarriorproject.org or you can check their Twitter out at WWP. For every new follower we get during the stream today, we're going to donate $50. So Winter Fresh 100 and one Sabo, one Sabo. Thank you both for the follows. It's $100 to the Wounded Warrior Project. So click that follow button if you haven't. We do shows three days a week. Got some good ones coming out next week, like Horizon Zero Dawn, uh, DLC, Star Wars Battlefront, and we're going to be playing Resistance 3 for you Resistance fans, yeah. like Death Badger asking with creative director Marcus Smith and uh, lead designer uh, Joel Goodsell. Now, we, oh, we nice. played Resistance 3 a little bit already, right? Yep, we where got to we, the where first. Where are we going to pick things up at? Uh, I think right after the boat, so right as we get uh, into St. Did, did you guys play the boat? We played the boat. That's great. Yep, we played the boat. Great sequence. Yep. So, uh, yeah, what man. made game devs uh, think player and shooters should just wait a minute or so? Was it easier for uh, to regain health? Why was regenerating health a big thing? I think because Halo started out, didn't they? Yeah. Halo, Halo 1 had it, the health packs, then Halo 2 brought it in with the regen, well, right? Was it? I thought Halo 1 had health packs for your health, but your shield still recharged. It's the shield yeah, recharges. Yeah, the shield recharge, yep, but your and base health. You had and, and I think that's the same way. Maybe other Halos just got to full recharging health. But I think all the Halos have been that way. But you always have that shield, so your base health. Basically, yeah. your base health always recharged for you. Uh-huh. Um, and, you know. You're just going to run right up the middle of the road. It, it's, <laughs> hey, man, I'm going in. Okay. I'm following my guys right now. Big games go. can create conventions that maybe... You know, some people just, you know, they follow, you follow what the big game does because the big game did sure. it. And, like, for instance, I saw if you played Assassin's Creed Origins, which I've been playing, um, their menus are very Destiny like, uh, with the same style of, like, almost moving a mouse cursor around the screen, a cursor around the screen to things. And there's things like that where once someone, once a huge game has done something, other people will always be looking at it to see. And then you also just know players know how to use that then. That's the other, I think, the other aspect why people borrow that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Got to stand on the shoulders of giants, you know? 
Well, it's like you know if millions of people have played a game that's this way, it makes it easier for them to understand oh, your oh, game. Oh, shit. If, uh, Ooh, that was a health pack. It cost yeah. you a health pack. That, guy. <laughs> that was close. Tell you what, man. I'm glad we're playing on Xbox because I learned how to play shooters playing Halo versus playing on a mm -hmm. PS3 controller. Right. It's so weird just because those sticks are on the same axes. I'm used to having the left stick on like different axes. Where, yeah, yeah. yeah, up, up higher. It just You're not feels a bit more gamer? natural. No, I'm not. It's so hard. Like, I play third-person games on PlayStation and first-person games on Xbox. It's weird. Is that a general rule you have? It it's really hard. is, man. Yeah, really? Because I, I play GTA on PS2, and that's how I learned to play third-person games. And then right. Halo on 360. Never since then, man. I just have to have both consoles. Um, yeah, I... Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I think... I actually like... I do like the Xbox controller better, personally. Like, I think... Yeah. I like having the the stick up higher but I'm with you in that like it seems like third like a kind of like a lot of third person games you end up playing a ton of shooters on Xbox and then right. like PlayStation's yeah. always had this better lineup of third person games mm -hmm. um, whether last, it's Blast or, or, and, or you know even going back to Jack and Daxter and Sly Cooper right. and Ratchet and Clank and, yep, yep. so I'm like, trying to remember though was it to say was the controller like that for like I was trying to remember playing through Gears of War originally was it all was the left stick always up, up? yeah Yep, ever since the, um, even the original Duke, I think it was up higher than the D-pad. Yeah, they always were. They were never on the same Yeah, instance. but especially from 360. I mean, the controller, the Xbox controller design hasn't changed much since the 360. Right. But they've polished it a lot. The Xbox One controller is just tremendous. I think it's super nice. The triggers yeah. are really great. Yeah, the, the Elite version of it is the best controller. Oh, the yeah. Years. Absolutely. I gotta get me one of those. I definitely think for me, like, Gears of War helped, like, solidify my love for that controller style. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um... I have Beast Blood said, uh, Insomniac, would you guys ever be interested in making another shooter that's not resistance? Um, maybe. I don't know. I mean, like, I would, I, I wouldn't say no. Like, yeah. I think if, the, we, if we had the right idea, yeah. right? Like, I, I think we all like shooters. A lot of us like shooters. The first game Insomniac ever made was Disruptor, which we'll probably stream in the next few weeks here. Um, nice. Uh, How would we get that to run? Gotta get an old PC in here or what for Disruptor? Oh no, it's PS1, man. That's PS1? PS1. Oh it's my gosh, PS1, I forget. Man. Yeah, jeez. Yeah, it's PS1 and it's, you know, there's no analog sticks for that oh. game, so you, it's like that. You have to like retrain your brain to use yeah. the shoulder buttons to turn and um, all that jazz. So it's it's actually kind of a trip playing it. Uh, yeah. But we have we have played it in this room, we've tested it in this room. Um, so, you know, I, like I said, it's not like. We're not like. That's a. I would say shooters are a competitive, tough market too. Like, yeah. So it's yeah, not it's necessarily huge. one that. You know, you have to in these in this day and age. I feel like it's almost intimidating to try and make a shooter because you have games like Call of Duty and Battlefront that have gigantic right. teams. You're expected to have the full suite too, not right. just single player, but multiplayer right. and even Co zombies or and whatnot. And survival mode, and you know, it's a tough, yeah, it's a tough market uh, to do well in. And I think like the Resistance games were great and you know had their niche, but um, I definitely, you know, you have to. I think as a game developer, if you're thinking about getting into shooters. Um, you better you better have a good hook or know what you're doing because mm -hmm. a lot of people have tried and you know there's been great shooters like I think of games like Evolve and, which yep. just you know didn't do much but then there's also really exciting you know oh, shit. at the same time there's exciting new ones like Player Unknown and um, yeah it's you know, coming out is, soon isn't it on Xbox? yeah on, on Xbox it comes out in a, about a month I think or a little yeah, under a month finally get to try it yeah we'll definitely be streaming that I know yeah. Ted loves that game and uh, we'll do some streams. I remember see when he came out of the office like a few, with it, probably a month or two ago. Where it was right after E3. Yeah, like, like, what like, what's is this deal with this game? Yeah, why do you care about this? It was it's like, you just need to play it. You just need to play fun. it, Ted. You need to, you need to play it. And then it's like, he's now like, he's like, I love that game. It's great. Uh, I gotta get another weapon. Even though you have a black cat plays, even though you have a great relationship with publishers, would you like to make an independent game like Ninja Theory did with Hellblade? I don't know the exact oh, deal that Hellblade. Nice. Well, all I know is like, well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe you can't release a World War II game. I, I'm curious. I should look up. Corey, what happened with this game in Germany? Because like the flamethrower. Oh, so yeah. back in Resistance One, we had a flamethrower, uh, and we could not oh release in God. Germany. Watch out! Watch your health! Watch your health! Um, <laughs> and so if you played Resistance One, the flamethrower is green because you oh, can't really? show. You basically can't show what we're doing here and like actually lighting people on fire. That you can't show in a video game in Germany, or you couldn't at the time. Maybe things have changed in the last decade, uh, or maybe they just don't have the weapon. Um, you don't know. Corey doesn't know. He's looking it up. Um, 
Okay. Well, anyway, I'm curious because you could not do that, and that's why the flamethrower is green and resistance. It actually looked awesome, red. It looked terrific, red. It was really, really cool. I don't know. I don't want uh, that. Probably. Strangely, it fit being green in resistance too. It wasn't a hard set. That was fine, but it essentially was in re in resistance. It was just a human flamethrower originally, and then yeah. it became a chimera infused green alien flamethrower, so that we could actually release the game in Germany. Though, my favorite of those type of weapons was the sapper. Oh yeah, yeah. It was, was, oh, it was the sapper originally. Wait, what do you mean? Oh, you mean just like an infused? Like it said something that weapon. felt like it was shot out like a rocket uh, or a flamethrower. Got it. It was great when you could uh, create like stalag. Was it stalactites that come down and stalagmites that go up? Or <laughs> yeah, stalactite. Let's just say you could basically create like goo stalactites that they would be explosive. It's pretty cool. Awesome. Chrono CX, thanks for the follow. If you guys have just tuned in uh, for every follow today, we're donating fifty dollars to the Wounded Warrior Project. Uh, so click that follow button here on Twitch if you haven't already. You know, tell your friends right now. Jump on. They can. Just by jumping on and following us, they can donate fifty dollars to Wounded Warrior Project, which is awesome. That there. was like a Saving Private Ryan uh, yeah. moment there. Yeah. Well, I actually thought it was interesting. They have the hero moment type things, which is another thing we were doing back all the way back in Resistance. Like they, yeah, they actually even call it out at one point with text. They're like, oh, have heroic moments where you see that a lot, where there's like guys tussling with each other, and if you nice. shoot and kill one. Um, but we had a ton of those. We always tried to have those hero moments, as we call them in Resistance. The first resistance, I think, yep. where you'd see like a chimera wrestling with someone, and you'd have a brief chance to yep. kill the chimera, and then that guy would run along with you and oh, help you. But if, run. <laughs> um, but if you didn't, it didn't work out. Right. Uh, Sonic Destroyer Two says, "What's your favorite weapon from one of your games?" What was oh. the one on up your arsenal on the cover? What's the name of that weapon for Red? Wait, wait, the one oh, on the cover? Oh. Yeah. Oh god! So you can upgrade, and it's got like four barrels. I worked on and that like cover <laughs> with Dave and Greg, and I don't remember because uh, he's holding it like this. yeah. It's right on the wall out there. Yeah, I, I don't remember. Forget, but man, that was my first Ratchet game, and oh my god, I'm really remember, yeah. That was the first game I worked on here, and it's awesome. man. The Great N60 game. says K Tiger. Thanks, K Tiger. Yeah, yep, yep. Nice. I remember that now. Thank you. Yeah, and that was the first time I discovered RPG systems and being able to upgrade weapons. I'm like, oh my god, you can upgrade this shit so it shoots a million bullets a minute, and it's got four barrels. And just seeing what it watch came your, from, to just have like health, two. What's it like working here now? Ah, oh, damn. Oh. After here you um, can go. All right. Turn. I've been playing for a while. What? Uh, all right, what's uh, what's it like working here after like when you have those moments where you're playing Ratchet and Clank as a kid? Oh my gosh, man! It's like a dream come true. It's like you guys like raised me basically. Like wow. I learned how to play. What did your parents say about that? They would be happy. <laughs> They're super stoked. I'm living in LA, a nice city, you know. Got a nice no, gig. No, our, our game's raising you. Oh. <laughs> um, Hit right. Yeah, they're fine with it. Hit right on the deep end. Uh oh. Health pack. Over here. But yeah, man. Oh, it's just a dream come true to work at Insomniac, you know. Especially working on a huge title like Spider Man now. Gosh. Yep. You're going to need another health pack. Alright. Uh, oh, shit. Damn it. Uh, that was fast. <laughs> <laughs> that was fast. Uh, Frosty Pixie 123, thanks for the follow. Like I said, every new follow today, we're donating fifty dollars to the Wounded Warrior Project. So, uh, I think we're—I don't even know—we're up to like a few hundred now. I think so. Keep it coming. Like I said, tell your friends. Oh, you watch go. out, Ryan! Watch out! Yeah. Oh, <laughs> pretty crappy this right oh, now. Man. I stay behind cover, dude. I know, I know. Well, that's one of the things I love about Resistance is that I didn't have to stay behind cover. Yeah. And I'm definitely it's a going guy guns blazing. Guy. I have beast blood. Did you miss me answering your question? Like we we talked about that. I I don't know, man. Did you like go back and watch the stream, dude? We we talked about it. I don't know, dude. All right. Um, oh shit. All right, here you go. I'll talk. <laughs> All right, I gotta put the team on the back right now. Yeah, let's go. Um, I would <laughs> say. Oh, dude, Corey just making jokes said, yes, we make a shooter if it was based on Dig Dug. I love Dig Dug. Dude, after watching Stranger Things, this is the, yeah, I know, this Stranger is the Things, second, that's all I want to play now. I was sitting next to a guy at lunch today, and he brought up Dig Dug as an example uh, I think, for something randomly. I think it's enjoying a renaissance. I think it's all because of Stranger Things. Of course. Things. Yeah, that's got to yeah. be. Mad Max. Which is weird, because Corey brought it up in the chat, but he hasn't watched any of Stranger Things. Because he refuses to watch Stranger Things, Why? because it's only homage to the 80s, not the real 80s. Did I explain your position incorrectly, Corey? 
He says it's derivative. It's derivative. Of the 80s. It's not. I would say it's less true. derivative than season one. You know, season one felt like a series of homages, whereas this one feels like its own sort of. Oh, but this story. was an homage to Jurassic Park, though. Oh God. <laughs> Parts too. Oh yeah, that too. There are certainly scenes in Stranger Things that are literally like pulled directly out of certain 80s movies. There we go. Um, but I still think it's awesome and it's worth watching. Yeah. Radom. Oh, Radom is a. Uh, that's got to be Adam, right? Oh, no, it's right not. in the gut. Radom says Corey's the worst. Oh. You guys can fight it out. Be careful, Radom. Corey has the band control, though, on the chat. Mm. That's uh, like the new version of like uh, he who controls. Oh, I can't even see that. that or buys, uh, no, no. what was that button press? <laughs> I, was I don't know. Say, was that why? Total saving, Private Ryan. Yeah, I don't know what that button press was. I, it was definitely something with Opum, and he's down there, and he's not going to save him. That's totally that sequence. All right, I think that was why. Um, you know, it's fun. You know, when a game uses a like you know a sparing amount of QTEs in a very cinematic moment. All right. I see. This is why. Why? Yeah, it's why. Oh. Boom. Uh, girls on me. Forty nine eighty says, "Sup? Hi. How are you?" Nice name. Come here, buddy. So I'll see you at four p.m. in the kitchen. It's on. Anastasia said, "My brother played this yesterday because my uncle had it." Corey's now talking crap about Winona Ryder's acting. Didn't she get nominated for something like for the last one? I hope so, but she was She's a really little good. over the top uh, in season one. But yeah, I I will be an unabashed Winona Ryder apologist as a child of the '80s. She is in the worst Alien reality movie. bites. She's so good. She is in the worst Alien movie though, Beetlejuice. by far. By Beetlejuice. Far. I, I, dude, I haven't seen it. You're gonna kill I, me, but I've never seen that. You can't. You can't. You seen Beetlejuice. I've never seen Beetlejuice. Oh. Bit before my time. I'm sorry. You gotta start. You, you, I mean, you go through this all the time. <laughs> oh God, I do. <laughs> I see what you did. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Steph. She might be watching with my kid right now. It's hard to watch because Daddy will be on uh, on the computer. I watched the cartoons, but I never watched the Michael Keaton movie. Have you seen Conan, Shane? No, we're going yeah. to see it tonight. Though I'll be at Corey's place. We're watching it or Trey's place. Oh, are you really? Yeah. I didn't know there was a. I didn't there's know there was a. Uh, there's yeah. a Conan watch party tonight. Yeah, our frisbee group. We're getting together. Watch some uh, Arnold. Uh, if you're just joining us, this is Insomniac Live. My name is James Suits. I'm the community director here. I'm here today with Chief Brand Officer Ryan Schneider, Associate Designer Shane McCluskey, and we're um, playing Call of Duty World War II, which is from Sledgehammer Games and Activision. Uh, and, you know, kind of... Uh, oh, my God! In this is cool. Oh, yeah, that's pretty sweet. The it's lighting. also interesting how, like, in past Call of Duty games, like, you were pretty well equipped from a, a right. arsenal perspective. Yeah, you got you the red dot. You, know, you got all this stuff. We're with very little. Mm -hmm. It takes a little bit to get pistol. used to. Yeah. Uh, we will say for every... Uh, I will, well, other thing I'll bring up real fast. For every new follower on Twitch uh, today, oh, oh, oh. we're donating uh, $50 to the Wounded Warrior Project. So click that follow button if you haven't. We do shows like three days a week. Lots of good streams with different developers from Insomniac playing our games, classic games, new games like Call of Duty right here. And I see Sledgehammer Games is in the chat saying thanks for playing and uh, hope you enjoy the campaign and glad we're supporting Wounded Warrior Project. Thank you guys for making a cool game and for the, the shout out. The sequence is awesome. <laughs> yeah, this this is this is pretty sweet. This is like a good example of a linear sequence. Yeah. It's like dragging well, the guy and, through, and, and then the smoke, just like all the yeah, atmosphere man. of it too, and like you're dragging yeah. him, you get gameplay back, and and oh, yet geez. and yet you see this debate about. Our single-player game's dead. It's like, it makes no, me so sad. Not at all. I know. Well, I will say, to be fair, this game did ship with multiplayer. And yeah. Co-op. <laughs> so probably, maybe not. Like, you know, sometimes player. it's the excuse for having a single-player campaign. Right. But, I, but I would also say, like, for for a game like Call of Duty, you need to you need to have it all. Yeah. Sean C nine nine four gypsums uh, Sean Wens. Bolaris Flex, Sledgehammer Games, Logan1194. Thank you all for the follows. That's $300 right there for those six follows to the Wounded Warrior Project. So thank you guys very much for following. That's awesome. Did you have to hit him with a morphine shot, it looked like? Yeah. Yeah, man. This is all cinematic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. yeah. Um, Help me. I need a goddamn medic! <laughs> Yeah, there's always the medical one. one. You gotta yeah, have it. Everyone needed one. 
Sean Newens, thanks for coming in. Thanks to the Sledgehammer Games for the retweet, letting yes. people know about it. That's awesome. Uh, uh, Sonic Destroyer said, I feel bad for the soldier who got a needle. I hate needles. Yeah, me too. Mm. I have to always look away when they take blood or whatever. Like, I just can't, too, can't see it happen. Like, it never hurts, but just, like, the sight of it going in. Well, it's like you tense up when you see it, and then it actually hurts more if you look away. Like, I don't want to... Yeah. Oh, I see. All right, you want to start off? Seems pretty late right now. <laughs> wow. oh, hey, man. Oh, I just want to push in the thick of it. Oh, man. I'll drop you in there. Wow. Oh. I ain't throwing shade. I'm just saying. <laughs> man, brutal. There you go. That's all right. Hey, man. You get your bearings about you first before we throw you into the heat. Yeah, this game's just gorgeous, too. Like, Oh, my God, right? Like the... Just the detail one. Mm -hmm. And I will say that we're playing it just on a regular Xbox, and this is probably only 720p going out on the stream, but I've been playing a little bit at home on Xbox One X in 4K and HDR, and it's stunning. You yeah. got all the new tech, eh? You got yeah. an Xbox One X too? Wow. Yeah. You know, you gotta... <laughs> I, gotta stay you know, on top of it. I, I you know, I, I like my TV and uh, game system stuff. That's yeah, for sure. For sure. So. I got a Switch waiting for me back at home in December. Nice. That, Mario, and Zelda, man. Yeah, those games are both sensational. Yeah, and I cannot wait. It's gonna you be haven't played Christmas Mario break. and Zelda, they're killer. Mm -hmm. um, it's Bunks, T-Dog, Mac the Whack, and Eddie Jr. Thank you all for the follows. That's we're doing $50 per fo new follower during today's go. stream to the Wounded Warrior Project. It's 150 bucks right there to Wounded Warrior. And uh, we appreciate all you guys uh, following. Um, helping us get towards We're trying to get towards that $5,000 total. Uh, and I don't know, Corey. At some point, will you let me know what total we are at for the whole stream if you get a chance, because I can't tell. I I feel like we're in the five, six, seven hundred dollar mark, eight hundred dollar mark, somewhere in that ballpark. I should totally not be doing this right now. You got it. You're still oh, watch out. There's someone shooting at you though, and there's a health pack across the way. I know. I see it. Grab that on the. I'm I'm not what you would call patient. There you go. Get him right there. There it is. There it is. Boom. Right there. Get him. Nice. Okay. There's another sure dude. He'll heal up. Yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Heal up. Right on the D-pad, there you go. Yeah, no, I got you. Yeah. Okay, 25 follows during the stream so far, so that means $1,250 nice. uh, so far. So we're already uh, basically a quarter of the way to our $5,000 goal. So let's keep it going, guys. Um, looking forward to that. And um, and Anastasia, don't do any unfollowing, refollowing. We're not counting those. It's got to be <laughs> No cheating. Appreciate that. No cheating. Uh, Faded X Rated, thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. Oh, yeah, yeah. There you go. Get on it. There you go. All right. Nice. Here we go. You got to have the turret sequence. It's not yeah. Call of Duty yeah. without the That's turret sequence. Fish in a barrel. Uh, sorcery War. There should be a box right under the... Right under... I don't know what you're yeah, watching on. If you're watching on a phone, I'm not exactly sure. But it's... Uh, uh, there should be a little box that lets you uh, click follow. Uh, oh, man. Yeah. There you go. Nice. There's a lot of a lot of them there. Oh, use that health pack. That's use what I'm doing. Pack. Oh gosh. And uh, I'm Android. Uh, just J Sequera ten, Young Taz eighty six, and Cabby plays. Thank you all for the follows. That's another two hundred dollars to the Wounded Warrior Project. So we're cruising right along. I think that puts us close to like twenty nine now. Nice. So uh, getting there. Um, thank you very much for those follows. Keep clicking the follow button, tell your friends, jump in during the stream, follow. It's worth $50 to Wounded Warriors Project with, when you do, which is just terrific. And I'm uh, happy to be able to help out there and raise some awareness yeah. for them. And it's awesome that Sledgehammer Games stopped by, that's cool. Congrats on shipping the game, guys. It's really been fun from what we've played so far and I'm looking forward to playing a lot more. Yeah, I heard multiplayer is great too. Yeah. And then zombies and whatnot. Everybody loves zombies. Yeah. Uh, Texel Monkey and Sorcerer Warrior. Sorcery Warrior. Thank you both for the follows. Appreciate that. Oh, Ryan, you're out of health packs. Oh, shit. And ammo. Oh, no. Uh, Gotta find a new gun. This is not good. 
Uh, oh. oh gosh, is that a? Oh, that's a that's a U.S. tank, isn't it? Yeah, nice. Like, yeah. Got it. But it's just eight of all, right? You got it. Should be, but maybe you. No markup on it. Hmm. Oh, what's behind you? There's something. They're pointing at something behind you. Oh, there you go. Oh, you gotta to... get on this guy. Oh, I could do that. There you go. Destroy the artillery. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So you probably go up to it. There's probably like a charge. There's probably some prompt. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm looking for. Just you like, should be get up close. Now you need to go up in the middle. There you go. There you go. X. Nice. Run! Brandon Dr. Twenty Seven saying this channel's awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're Thanks, we try man. to we try to have a fun show. Now, like <laughs> I said, if you click follow, we've got some fun shows next week coming up. We're gonna be playing uh, Horizon Zero Dawn: Frozen Wastes. Yeah, you definitely on the left uh, on Monday, and then we're playing Early Resistance points. Three with the creative director of Resistance Three, Marcus Smith. On Wednesday, we'll be picking up where we left off. If you missed the previous stream of that, go check it out in our past videos. It's actually a lot of fun, and then. Uh, on Friday, we'll be playing Star Wars Battlefront 2, so... Um, you guys ever do any throwback games? I know we do Super Nintendo Classic, Yeah, right? we've, we've played throwback games, basically played Full Throttle, we played like nice. Mega Man X. Corey's game. Super Metroid, so definitely... Uh, we gotta get some N64 going. Gotta play some we Ocarina. Do play, what, I don't think you'll have any trouble getting James to play uh, Ocarina, yeah, yeah, for sure. That's the way to go, man. I think we're going to do that, and we're gonna do a Mario oh. Kart 64 tournament. Oh, somewhere. there you go. Nice. So that's definitely coming. Yeah, man. Ocarina. Life changing game for me. Right Sorcery there. Warrior. I suggest Ted Price for every show. That'd be awesome. But Ted has to run the company. Uh, we do get him in here. He's got I, things I, to do. I think every three or four weeks, try to have him in here for something or another. Probably the next time. Maybe he'll just crash a stream. Who knows? Yeah, that can happen too. He's we done have, that a couple times. <laughs> we did play uh, Ratchet 1 this week on Monday with Ted Price, if you go check that out. We also played Super Metroid with him a, lot, a few weeks ago. If you And then uh, I think a few weeks from now, we'll probably play Disruptor with Ted. Uh, Basalt11347, thank you very much for the follow. It's another $50 to the Wounded Warrior Project, so very much appreciate that. It's nice that they had an homage to Big Red 1, too. Yeah. The so. First Division. Nice. Yeah, I never played any Call of Duties before Modern Warfare. Really? So I went back, remember, because it was so good, I played 2 and 3, because it was mm -hmm. like, you could aim down the sights. But like, what was the first game you could aim down the sights in? Because like, I grew mm. up playing Halo. Could you do it in Medal of Honor? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was okay. Medal of Honor, I think. Yeah. Was, that was the first one? Yeah, it was yeah, like that was classic, you know, World War II rifle. You know, that single shot, single kill right. kind of rifle. That, that carbine, was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that carbine was the thing. Oh, you got both heroic... Oh, it, could, it even tracks the heroic actions. There you oh. go. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I remember it was such a revelation playing COD 4 and aiming down the sights with that red dot. I'm like, oh my god, every game's got to be like this. Yeah. Now. Like, Halo's yeah. dead. It's crazy. Well, did you ever, this might be before your time too, but did you ever play Black on PS2? No. Oh, my uncle man. all the time told me about it. He's like, Shane, you got to make a game like Black, man. I'm like, all right, Uncle Paul, Black. I'll see what I can do. Black was, <laughs> Black was cool. Yeah, I heard that was good. And this is cool too because Operation Cobra was a real, real big deal. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's cool to be able to relive. Right. Start the next that. one. You want me to start the next mission? Yeah, yeah. You haven't played yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you gotta get in there. Host is gonna play too. Um, I'll let you guys uh, do some of the questions while I do that. But I saw. Uh, oh, Logan said, uh, "Did you guys crash or did Brian crash the stream?" Yeah, Brian crashed Ted's stream because on Friday last week we did a stream doing a rewind of the Spider-Man trailer for PlayStation Four, and Ted crashed that stream that Brian was on. Uh, so Brian was just paying Ted back by crashing the stream Ted was on, uh, because that's what we do now here is people crash the stream room. <laughs> yup. Let's see. Man, cinematics. Uh, Dana's LP is asking if we've ever tried to perform speedrun tricks in our games. Uh, as you can see, I have a hard enough time just getting through the regular game, so I have not speedrun very much. No, I don't try, but I like watching, and it always blows my mind the way people play the Yeah, it's the crazy games. how they can do that stuff. Like, yeah, like, it, it's crazy. The stuff that was never intended uh, that's pretty special. Um, I think, uh, what did I see? Johnny Gary, good luck, I can't donate. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is click the follow button. If you click the follow button, we do the donating, so... All you gotta do is follow, and we donate fifty dollars to uh, uh, 
to the Wounded Warrior yeah. Project. You don't have to do anything. Yeah, we got this. It doesn't cost you nothing. Just the click of that follow button uh, during the course of this stream today. Um, the soldier with the glasses looks like a young Jeff Goldblum to me, so Sonic Destroyer. Speaking of Jeff oh, Goldblum. Wow. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, I, I kind of said. Well, I mean, yeah. he looks like... Uh, he looks like the star of that show, Numbers. He might be. Yeah. He might actually be. Uh, the, uh, I will say, Jeff Goldblum, if you haven't seen Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, I'm seeing it on I Sunday. See that I cannot wait. Sunday, it looks yeah. really good. Yeah. 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 How's it rank in terms of your Marvel ranking? Uh, like, there's, what, about 20 Marvel movies now? That's I crazy, put it, man. like, up like 9 or 10 oh, in yeah? that ballpark. Like, somewhere in there. Like... I we mean, need to ride the tank. it's my favorite Thor movie by far, and I, yeah. I put it in the upper half of the Marvel movies. I mm -hmm. think it's really, really good. Like, I think I think like the top eight, nine, ten Marvel movies are all really terrific. Yeah, for sure. Um, and there's only like, a, and like I said, it's definitely my favorite Thor movie. You like it better than far. Guardians? No, Sonic Guardians Destroyer is my favorite. There. Yeah. Guardians one. is my favorite Marvel yeah. movie, and Guardians Two is probably top five. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the one thing about Thor is like it is it definitely feels like it's in the Guardians universe. Ragnarok. Yeah, I heard awesome. they really changed up the tone a no, to it's add a lot that. more humor into it. You know, more of that ensemble cast style. Yeah, it's it's um, it's really good. Like it has that. I mean, it just like, but it feels more like where Thor would go to like Asgard and stuff, and that interstellar universe didn't feel quite the same as mm -hmm. like it feels like it's in the Guardians universe where the spaceships look that certain way and kind of the yeah. people dress and there's kind of that lighter tone that to it. Gorgeous. Right. That is effing gorgeous, right there. Jeez. Yeah. I mean, it looks like you're there. Yeah, it looks amazing. Yeah, that lighting, dude. And we aren't even playing on an Xbox One X. It can look even right. better if you guys play on PlayStation 4 Pro or Xbox One X. Okay. So let's see. And, uh... You know, what do you know about Operation Cobra? Do you know anything about it, Ryan? Do you know the specifics, any of the history of it? Uh... Anyone? Maybe. I just know that it occurred a few weeks after D-Day, and it was, uh, it was, it was. I think it was meant to capitalize on the, that the Germans were in a little bit in disarray uh, from the American and Canadian assault, and this was meant to put more pressure on them on a different front. Uh, and I do know that ultimately it was a success, but that's pretty much all I know. I don't know, I don't know a ton. I also thought. Uh, I may be wrong, but I thought that they fight in Carantan in this too, just like in uh, Band of Brothers, but I'm mm. not sure. Thanks to Sledgehammer Games for popping in the chat. Appreciate you guys coming by. Thanks for uh, retweeting, letting us play our game. We uh, yeah, are big fans. So Congrats on shipping. You guys, and good luck with all of your multiplayer stuff to come. I know like these days you ship a game like this and that's just the beginning. So congrats yeah. on shipping the box and yep. good luck with you know all the follow-up content. I know you guys have a lot to, to do since then. And uh, if you're just joining, this is Insomniac Live. We're playing Sledgehammer Games Call of Duty World War II. My name is James Stevenson. I'm the community director here. I've got Chief Brand Officer Ryan Schneider, Associate Designer Shane McCluskey, and uh, oh, this is the second mission. It was... Uh, Everything was just going so well for this nice, yeah. you know... <laughs> it was a nice, nice country tank drive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh. And shit, it's the fan. Wow. Um, and one of the things we're doing today is if you follow Insomniac on Twitch during the stream, we're donating $50 to the Wounded Warrior Project. Um, so click that follow button if you're signed in uh, on Twitch, and uh, we'll donate 50 bucks to Wounded Warrior. You can find them at woundedwarriorproject.org, and they're a great organization, and we're really happy to support them and try and raise some awareness around them today. Sorry, I left you with the carbine. Or, oh, no, it's all good. <laughs> Dude, the carbine's great. Carbine's great. That it sound is, effect? Super, I, I, well, I love that. Yeah, the shing sound effect. I feel like it's almost like, so a, good. like it almost could be like a mnemonic for Call of Duty, uh -huh. or at least certainly back in the day. Flash a logo, shing! Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dan L's LP, that's not a good idea. <sighs> so I wonder where they're going next with Call of Follow Duty. Follow once, though. please. You think they're gonna stay World War II? Because uh, Treyarch's up well, next, hey, I think. If you look at the sales after the first few days, uh, yeah. the, the, their audience is speaking quite loudly so yeah. far. Treyarch's up next, right? I think. Yes. Uh, yeah, because it was Infinity Ward, right? Yep. Oh it? god. Infinite Warfare. 
Yeah. Oh god. Oh Shout god. out to oh god. Uh, John Raffis and the crew over at Treyarch. I'm sure they're probably. Oh no. Somewhere. Yeah. Oh. I enjoyed Black Ops 3. I like the new classes they had and the multiplayer, man. All right. That was the first one I prestige in in a long time. Was Black Ops 3. They all do. Every every team there does a fantastic job. Oh yeah, They're for great. sure. Treyarch's got a stream too, I believe. But they do somewhat regularly. Oh yeah. Yeah, they they yeah. Favorite first person shooter as Sonic Destroyers at Titanfall oh. 2. Oh, Titanfall. So good. Congrats to everybody at Respawn for the EA acquisition. Yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah, it's, crazy. it's exciting for them. It's like, I'm sure, a great deal for everybody there. And Making Star Wars and Titanfall 3 now. Should be yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of great guys over there and mm -hmm. great folks who've been around and had good friendships with Respawn ever since they opened. Yep. Uh, if you go, they actually used the Ratchet and Clank engine when they were prototyping uh, Titanfall. Uh, oh, yeah. Like the old, wow. old Insomniac engine, not the one that was like our PS3 engine, and God help them, because <laughs> we've come a long way since those days, but... Um, it was just meant to get them up and running. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, I think Modern Warfare uh, uh, COD 4 is probably my favorite first-person shooter, though yeah. the one that influenced me the most was probably uh, Frontline when it came out. Mm -hmm. Like, I just remember leaving my work at, at, at lunch and driving home just so I could play. Yeah. And I and it wasn't even I was just playing it over and over and over again, like mm -hmm. the same levels. Or right. to see how how fast I could get through oh. uh, without dying. Mm -hmm. Like not really speedrunning, just trying to really just become an expert at it. Yeah. But that was a long time ago. For sure. So what was that, PS two then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey man, COD 4 still holds up. I played oh, the remaster awesome. last year and that whole sequence where the nuke goes off and you're in the chopper. Oh my god. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. It's crazy, man. And then the one sniping level with Captain Price or whatever. Are you talking about the uh, one oh. with the snow or the, uh, the ghillie suit? The ghillie one. suits. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. snow, is the snow. Which one was the snow one? I is that Modern Warfare 2? Yeah. Was that, that was, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I used to play uh, that in co op with a, a good friend of mine. Yeah. Uh, the uh, ghillie suit was in Chernobyl, right? Yep. Like yeah. Mm -hmm. Chernobyl, that was which is, good. Which yeah, to me, like, is one of the things I love about, you know, like, for the same reason I kind of like the movie Titanic, is there's some of these places that, you know, you've seen the Titanic, uh, like, I used to love reading about the Titanic as a kid and, like, seeing right. pictures of the wreck. And so then seeing Titanic uh, and seeing this, uh, what do I do? Up, press up, again. Uh, there you go. You. Heal up. Oh, no, that wasn't a health pack, that was ammo. Oh no! Uh, K Tiger thirty four is asking if uh, we loan our engine out. It's not really, it's not really like that. Uh, we were just helping a developer get started uh, out here, who we, we've been friendly with uh, many of those folks for a long time. So I had the first aid kit. I'm yeah. gonna pass it back to Shane. All right, yeah, you've been waiting. All right, <sighs> show us how it's done. Yeah, it's time to get us through it. Oh, that guy's just that guy's easy. No, I really, I was, I thought I'd use the health pack, and then I didn't realize I had to use the health pack. That was the problem there. Yeah, so I think you gotta stay close and then ask for a health pack and then they give you uh, the this ammo. Okay. Kubarakin 119, uh, we don't know because we didn't make uh, Call of Duty. Uh, that's yeah. the game's made by Sledgehammer. <laughs> yeah, that's an awkward We're just question. developers playing other people's video games. We just like video games them. too, you know. Yeah. We, we yeah. make and play video games. Yep, so that's what the show's about and uh, hope you enjoy. And like I said, if you guys, uh, during the stream today, if you f follow. Uh, uh, if you follow Insomniac on Twitch during the stream today, we will uh, donate uh, fifty dollars to the Wounded Warrior Project. So click that follow button, every follower. And I think we've gone about probably around fifteen hundred dollars so far. We've donated during the stream today. How does your family observe veterans? There are so many veterans in your family. Uh, there's really anything super special usually. Um, it's not like we all get together or anything, but right. I don't know. It's nothing like nothing crazy. Um, though you know, I think I think my dad would usually be off work that day. I'm not hundred percent on that, honestly. You know. oh, shit! I'm going in now. Uh, oh yeah! Fuck. Now you gotta uh. med kit, med kit, med kit. Ah, oh, damn! Oh. I don't feel as bad now. <laughs> I don't feel as bad. Yeah. Even I'm dying. All right, we're popping nades. Yeah, we're dying a bunch. Uh, we'll get through it. Right, where's more cover? 
I feel like one thing about Veterans Day now is that it feels to me like I wouldn't say every day is Veterans Day because that dim diminishes the the meaning of Veterans Day. But I think it seems like our culture now is so much more attuned and aware of thanking our servicemen for their duty. Right. That it used to be like an annual holiday, whereas now it's a pretty regular occurrence that we're looking out for ways to honor the people who serve. For sure. Yeah, I think it's I think it's still love. I don't know, it's like weird too, because I know, I, I think it feels different. Maybe being in LA, it just, you know, people are busy and it doesn't feel like it's as big a thing as right. like living in Nebraska yeah. or in the Midwest. It's not quite like the Midwest. Right. Like it was back home for me. Yeah, yeah like right. people, you know, you kind of would feel a little bit more, people make a bigger deal about it. But, you know, it certainly wasn't anything like a 4th of July or a Memorial Day um, where that ends up having a little bit more of a. Right. Um, more of an impact, I guess, because more people have it off. I think it's also just having that, like, you know, some people get it off, but a lot of people don't get it off. And, like, we're here working today. Right. Um, but is this is this really work? Uh, yeah, no, no. But, you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> Today's a good day. It is a good day. We're playing Call of Duty. Yeah, we had Indian it food, It is Friday. Too. With it's Friday. Indian food catered by our company, helping veterans out. Not a bad it's deal. Good day. Pretty yeah. good. It's a good it's day. Pretty good. Uh... And Tommy, are you planning to stream, live stream Skyrim on the new Razer phone when it releases? I don't get the right. <laughs> that sounds like a leading phone question. stream. Is that, that like the tagline? The the handle is like Razer Fan Three One Seven oh. or something. <laughs> oh, someone asked Probably earlier. Some ad. I saw I, I saw the question. It was like, well, how's the new Ratchet and Clank game going? I'm like, I saw there's that. been nothing announced. So like, uh, what do you know that we don't? Yeah, exactly. Say, I'm guys. not sure what you're talking about. We're we're focused on Spider Man for PlayStation Four, and we're also still doing some content for the Unspoken. Uh, on Oculus Rift, and uh, yeah, you know, those Spidey are the two man. games that uh, exist in our world. Nice, that was a headshot. Yes, sir. Go peep that Spidey trailer if you haven't seen it yet. Everyone worked super hard on it. How many views we got right now on that Paris Games Rift trailer? Uh, oh, you should ask Corey. Five. Corey what? knows probably down to the minute. No, no, how, many, how many views, views on, on the Paris, Paris Games, Games trailer? trailer? Okay, wait, 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 hold up. Uh, Rep. Whip around time, because I actually know this answer. <laughs> Corey, how many views do you think we have on the Paris Games Week uh -oh, trailer? Now, uh -oh. this, to this, I will say, is a combined total between Mar uh, between PlayStation's Facebook page, uh, several, the biggest YouTube accounts, which includes Marvel, uh, PlayStation, and IGN. Oh, wow. As well as Marvel's Instagram page, which has a large total. So, with all that said... How many million views does it have? As we whip around the studio to get everyone's answers. Five. Five, five what, million? Yeah. Okay, Justin, what do you say? Uh, eight. Eight million. Shane. I'm going high, let's go ten. Ten million? Hey, man. No one's been right so far. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna say 12 million. 12 million, wow, really high. Corey was the closest. We were, I think, around 6 million views on the trailer uh, in the last week and some change, with uh, about 3.5 million on YouTube, a million and a half on Instagram, and another million or so on Facebook. Um, so, yeah, that's six. That's pretty good. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Well, considering none of them were uh, paid, that's all organic views. Correct. Correct. Now we're getting in all of the marketing speak. A lot of people thought that our E3 trailer, friendly. our E3 trailer was oh, uh, had like 40 million views. I think now 41, 41 million views 41. of the E3 trailer. Wow. Yeah. I should have asked Chat how many they thought though. They could have looked it up and cheated. Um, <laughs> so 41 million views of that E3 Spider-Man trailer, and that was with no paid advertising for that trailer. That that's wow. organic. That's nice. Between as mainly uh, like 20 million was Math Chief on YouTube. We're gonna get you, Math Chief. That's fine. It's cool. Just some random dude that posted our trailer named Math Chief. Yeah, he get the thing is like people rip the trailers out of the live streams and post yeah. them, and for whatever reason the trailers were slow getting up from on the PlayStation cool. account. Uh, so Marvel has like 20 million views on it. It's actually the PlayStation 3. It's not even a trailer technically. Nice. It's nine minutes you of gameplay. It. But the Marvel Arc E3 demo. Um, you do have if you can get to your guy. Oh, he just gets. I was gonna say finally. I gotta I get think close you blew that. I think you blew that sniper out. Nope, you didn't. 
I'm gonna go run up there once this side's cleared out. Hey, it worked for me before. There you go. Sometimes you just gotta go full resistance. Yeah. Oh, you can flip that? Oh, nice, Oh, man. nice. That's, That's cool. cool. That's cool. Heck yeah. Um, so, uh, anywho, I don't even know what I was saying. Oh, but if you go on Marvel's YouTube account, that nine-minute Spider-Man gameplay, which nine minutes is a long YouTube video. It's huge. It's like the 13th most, uh, 13th most watch or 14th most watch a video ever on Marvel's Facebook or uh, Marvel's YouTube channel. So it's like one of the biggest. It's up there with like the, it's basically it's just like the biggest Marvel movie trailers and then that Spider-Man video. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. I just saw a stat too that like longer form videos, which is defined as like longer than 90 seconds, actually uh, perform better than short form videos uh, huh. on YouTube. Yeah. Was... I wonder why that is. You guys like people in the chat are watching. You've always been watching a stream for a while, but you like longer videos. You like shorter videos. Oh, I like all the aircraft coming in. And real oh, quick, cool. Rackin Ooh and Faded Stream. Thank you both for clicking that follow button. For each of you, we're going to donate $50 to the Wounded Warrior Project. So that's another 100 bucks to Wounded Warrior. Uh, anyone else who's tu just tuned in and joined, click that follow button. We do awesome streams here on Insomniac Live three times a week. Um, we've got great stuff like Horizon Zero Dawn, Frozen Wastes next week, or Frozen Wilds next week, um, Star Wars Battlefront 2, and we're doing a Resistance 3 stream with Resistance 3 Creative Director Marcus Smith. And we've had 36 followers today, so that's... Uh, Eighteen hundred dollars to the Wounded Warrior Project, um, headed out. So that's uh, that's awesome. Thank you guys all for clicking that follow button. You guys getting that Horizon DLC? Yeah, I haven't actually had a chance to play it yet. And I, weirdly, I think I talked about this before, but I have never finished. I never finished Horizon Zero Dawn. I put oh, like forty hours. I put forty hours into it. I've done a ton of. I've done all the cauldrons. I've done all the hunting grounds, like I've done a ton of stuff, but then I mm -hmm. never like powered through the end of the story, Dude. which happens to me in like Fallout 4 was the same way. I put like 70 hours into Fallout 4 and I never finished the story. Mm -hmm. um, and actually I had a scare thinking I had deleted my save, but it's oh, there. It's oh, cool. Yeah. I'm, I, at some point I'm going to go spend another 30 hours doing all the DLC, but I do next week we will pick up in the middle of my Horizon Zero Dawn game and... Um, uh, do the Frozen Wilds, which I guess oh. is not Endgame. What should it's... we do? Okay, we're gonna we're gonna keep them. So while we'll you let decide to keep them, uh, Anastasia twenty forty fifty eight asks, "How many sales are you expecting out of Spider Man?" And K Tiger replies, "All of the sales." A million billion. <laughs> <laughs> There's a good question for you, chat. How many sales do you think Spider Man will do? That's I I don't even know what that number should be, but I'm curious what you guys think. Oh, yeah, oh nice. shit! You gotta get to the Gotta love air support. Oh, watch you out. gotta take out the anti-aircraft gun now. What do we got in here? So what's been your favorite memory as an insomniac? So far? That you can share. I'd say E3, man. Like I was only about three, four months in. This is my first like full-time job, let alone first job in the industry, but Man, seeing that trailer and being at E3 too, oh my god, it was crazy. Like I just grew up seeing E3 as this like mountain on a hilltop or whatever. You know, you see it in magazines and on YouTube and stuff. And now like I'm here and we closed the Sony press conference. It was like, god, I was almost in tears. Like I can't believe I'm working on this game and I'm at this company. So yeah, probably my proudest moment and favorite moment. Okay, so, so far. first full time job. I'm that sure was, a lot of people yeah. are wondering like, how did you get a full time <laughs> yeah. job at Insomniac? Yeah. Is your first full time right, no. job? Like, let's talk I, uh, about how you got here. Get a computer science degree and get a lot of internships, because that helps. Did so you intern weird. for us here? I did not. I had a bunch of internships in tech in the Midwest. And then, to be fair, I did have a temp job at Volition. The guys at make Saints Row for about six months as a local designer. Okay. So that definitely that helped out a lot, too. But yeah, those were all just three well, you internships. You got to shoot down the planes. Oh, up to the right, up to the right. The plane, the plane. Where? Where? Oh, there, there you go. Nice. Lead your targets, lead your targets. Oh, here so we go, what? nice. Okay, so you got a computer science degree. Yep. Uh, and then my minor was game design, so okay. it was kind of best of both worlds. Where'd you go to school? Michigan State. Go Green. Oh, wow. Ohio, Ohio State better watch Spartan. out tomorrow. Spartan. Yes, sir, man. Go yeah, for the Big Ten Championship. Out. Although, you You're know, Nebraska, you're, right? Yep, I'm He's Nebraska. Nebraska. I'm Arizona. Okay. Yeah. Which, we, we got a, a Khalil Tate Out of everyone, we right seem now. to have... We, have, we actually uh, have anyone in the Big Ten. Michigan State's like the one team we've kind of had their number a little bit. Yeah. But, uh, got it. I will say... 
I while I think Michigan State certainly is capable of beating Ohio State, especially after the turd Ohio State laid last week in Iowa City. Mm-hmm. Which I cannot believe that. That was crazy. I honestly can I can't root for Ohio State ever unless they're playing Iowa, and then it's like, yeah, please just have a good time. Yeah. Uh, hygienic false, very but, false. But here's my thing. I would not want to be playing them this week because they're going to be playing really pissed off after yeah. them last week. But hey, man, we're coming off a high. We just beat Penn State, you know. That's so. the other reason. Like you yeah. guys are on the high. They're on the like. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I don't know. So. I don't like and our that defense game. is fired up, man. We're I don't good. like that. He's playing well. I do not like that game. I do not like coming off a big win, having to play another giant team that's really annoying. Of course, then again, a lot of teams come out of Iowa City pretty beat up. So. <laughs> uh, Anastasia, it's Spider-Man with a with a dash, and the M is capitalized in mass. Yes. Yes, Anastasia, none of those are right. The first one is closest, but you need a capital M. Which, that said, it does get weird because when you hashtag it, you can't put a dash in it. So oh. that's the one time you see us not use a dash is in the hashtag Spider-Man PS4. There we go. Uh, Lil Cuckoo says state. you're my Lil Cuckoo says you're my favorite game studio. It's so surreal interacting with you guys. Why? Thank you. Thanks for coming in and interacting with us. That's what this is here for. GI Joe SO nine one six. Thank you for the follow. That's another fifty dollars to the Wounded Warrior Project. So very much appreciate that. I think we must be getting close to that two thousand dollar number. Yeah, sure. Go for it. Man, you're sweating after that sequence. uh, Faded X-rated says I'm a Michigan fan and I can't root for Michigan State or Ohio. Boo! Totally leave. Think you're correct in that Michigan (laughs) Michigan fan? Um, That's 100% true. (laughs) You cannot root for those two teams, and that's totally fine. I, hey, man. I, I root for our. I can pretty much root for most of the Big Ten when they're playing out of conference. I was gonna say I root for Michigan when you're playing Ohio State. All right, so at least do me that favor. Well, that's sure. That's fair. I, and I and I root for like. I can even, well, except for Iowa, but I root for everyone else when mm-hmm. they're playing out of conference. Like, right. Like, yeah, I want Ohio State to beat Oklahoma for sure. Yeah, yeah. Now, Iowa, I, if they could lose to North Dakota State, great. That's, mm-hmm. That was hilarious. That made, that yeah. actually, I could live off of that for like a few weeks. Right. Them losing to it. <laughs> Just love it. Yeah. It's hysterical. Um, Get out your binoculars. Kill Striker, how much is Ratchet and Clank 2016 sold? Are we allowed to know? That's a figure Sony has to release. Um, what we have said before is, is the fastest Ratchet and Clank, fastest selling Ratchet and Clank uh, game of all time. <laughs> so, I think video games. <laughs> I think that's still true. I don't know actually. I'd have to look, but I think it's if it's not true, it's still pretty close to being the fastest selling. Um, this is a bad idea. It, Pop a nade, man. I just saw the grenade and I got a little. There. Yeah, yeah. You may not want to go down into the trench. Yeah, yeah. Keep that. I, 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 I want to keep the higher ground. ground. I would tend to agree there. I don't like. Kill says I'm not if a some, big fan of bolt action. If Sunset Overdrive ever comes to PC, I'll be there day one. That would be super cool if that happened. Um, Sorcery Warrior, Spider-Man has a baby. Will it also become Spider-Man? Uh, I don't. I don't know. That's Is that how it works in the Marvel Universe? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, Remaster Resistance has followed. I get what you did there. But, hey, it's 50 bucks for Wounded Warrior Project, so that's cool. TV Flame, thank you for the follow. Another $50 for the Wounded Warrior Project. Definitely appreciate that. And um, always great to be able to make those donations. To, uh, oh, health kit, health kit, health kit, health kit, health kit. Get down. Get down, get down, Crouch. Get down. There you go. There you go. Yep, go prone, go prone. Nope. Oh, oh shit. grenade. Nope. Uh, G.I. Joe wants us to play some uh, multiplayer. Maybe we'll do one quick multiplayer match after this mission or if we die or something. That would be cool. And we'll let Shane play because he's the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that ain't happening. We'll see. You I should, you should any... heal, though. Yes, Definitely I got it. I got it. There you go. Got it. Uh, Faded Stream, which Ratchet and Clank game is your favorite? Uh, chat, you can answer that question. Uh, guys, favorite Ratchet and Clank game? Oh, that's easy. Up your arsenals. Yeah, man. Me too. That's mm. the way to go. Quark Comics Forever. <laughs> that's hard for me these days. I think I'd say a cracking time. Great game. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, it's between that and Up Your Arsenal and going Commando. 
So it's yeah. speed three. Um, I like going commando a lot. Um, it was definitely even more challenging than the first one too. Uh, oh god. I know. I, I, oh no. That was a rough spot. To all right, get. let's go to multiplayer real all quick. Right. We only have a few minutes go left. For it. All right, let's, let's do all it. All you. I'm gonna let Shane take us into multiplayer. We're gonna play a little bit of multiplayer since that the chat has demanded it. Hingen, hingenic, hygienic, hygienic. Wow, he's he's mean. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the follow. It's another fifty dollars for. Ah, but he did follow. Okay. He, what did that's he say? Good. What did he say? Oh, uh, you don't want to know. <laughs> he that said he said something not nice about you. Me? But he said that I was touched by Charlie Sheen or something. So. Jesus. Who no, the heck I, knows? What did he say about me? On the internet. Man. No. He said you look like a fat sack Galapagos. Oh, I was like, trying to figure out who the hell he was talking about. That's cold. I was all like, like well, who, who the hell is he we're, talking we're, about? Yeah, then I, I don't realized know. it's me. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wow. Well, <laughs> like I had no clue. I was I'm mean. about a buck thirty soaking yeah. wet. So you got the beard, I was just like, man. I was like, I don't know what he's talking. I'm like, I'm, I must have missed something. I have no idea what he's talking about. Apparently, <laughs> I'm the fat Zach Galapagos. He said I was touched by Charlie Sheen. So, I mean, wow. I, Corey, do you have you ever? Did you realize he's talking about me? <laughs> you, you was, I was like, you know, when I see people talking like that, I usually just ignore them. Right. <laughs> I just was confused. I didn't know what was going on. Uh, K-Tiger uh, asked about, did anybody play Up Your Arsenal online? And I can tell you that the battles online for Up Your Arsenal inside the studio were super intense. Uh, we, all, we all broke up into teams. We had tournaments. And Dave Gurton and Greg Baldwin and Steve Ryder even made a logo for their team. They were Team Goo, as I recall. And, uh, <laughs> they just wrecked everybody. They would practice at lunch. It was, it was insane. I loved playing that uh, multiplayer. It was outstanding. So how many people were at the studio back then when up your? Uh, about a hundred. I was. Yeah. At, I was. We went from fifty to a hundred real fast from going commander to up your arsenal. I was yeah. employee ninety at the time, and I'm probably somewhere in the low to mid tens right now in terms okay. of uh, tenure, but at the same time, I mean, still the fact that there's more than 10 people here who've been here, you know, almost you know, more than 15 well, years. Yeah, so wait, who's been here longer than you? John, Johnny Al, Garrett, Ted, yeah. Brian, Carrie? Tom Barlow, Carrie. Tom Barlow, Dave Hancock? Uh, yeah. Dave Gerson. I, f I just, I feel like recruiters are just writing names down. Oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> Who can we steal? Call, so it's so. really like you're barking up the wrong tree if you go into those like yeah, long, yeah, old yeah, timers. Are, they're OGs yeah. at that point. Yeah. Um, uh, someone asked, Lil Cuckoo said, have you tried to get this channel partnered? I think we actually are. We just haven't activated certain things. That's coming very soon. So I know some of you are like, oh, I want to be able to cheer or do other things. Um, Raven it's, Simone. It's coming. So <laughs> that's awesome. There you go. Raven Simone's in here. <laughs> Be, Big cod player. Yeah, we'll, way back when she can see the future, so she'll she'll know how to win. We're noobs to this Twitch. Did you know how Raven stuff. Simone got her start? No, how? Yeah, well, wasn't it Cosby I show? Have, yes. I have beef. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cosby show. Yeah. We're, yeah. Baby we're talking Cosby about show. cheering. Yep. Don't worry, it's coming. We'll we'll let you have cheers. All these maps. Uh, four twenty. Do we know anything about the issues it's having? No, we don't know. We're just playing the game. So. We're just happy to be here. Just take it one pitch at a time, yeah. one game at a time. I'm sure the Sledgehammer folks are working hard on it. So um, they were in here earlier, yeah. and you can definitely hit them on their Twitter. And I actually saw them answer a couple of fan questions uh, related to whatever issues yeah. may be happening. I know they said they're working on it. Um, Nick Bates Live said, I know you're not responsible for the HD ports. Do you have any idea? If so, could tell us if not the original Ratchet Trilogy will be ported to PS4 Sorry. like the Jack games. Uh, Sorry, that's Sorry. totally up to Sony. Um, we think it'd be awesome if that happened, right. but there's nothing to announce or say at this time. So. All right, may the force be with you. Shane. All right, let's do it. <sighs> All right. See if I still got it. Do you still say have a it? quote from one of the Ratchet and Clank games. Oh, you win again, Lord. technology. Oh, that's a great one. That's my. That's the. That's the stickiest Ratchet quote for me. Uh, I'm just gonna instead of a quote, I'm gonna say. <laughs> there you go. That's pretty good. Uh, Ratchet Extreme 6, what was it like working with Naughty Dog? We didn't really work with them, we just worked a lot, we kind of, our offices were next door to each other. And we traded some bits of code for... Oh, oh that guy was waiting. He was just I know. camping. Well, look at that, that, look at that, he was just waiting for you to walk around the corner. He actually got tired. And Two he guys, walk. he got a double kill, man. Jeez. Yeah. He got tired and waited for you guys to walk in it. Uh, Sweet ghillie suit. Yeah. So yeah, we... Anyway, my point being, uh, we didn't really work with them, but we've always They're shared like sister it. sister studios, bits. right? Yeah, I, that's a good way of putting them. Yeah. Um, 
and like we see those guys, Arnie. Arnie's even come over and been in this very studio checking it out. Uh, thank you to ASQ189 uh, for the follow. And like I said, every new follow during the stream, we're donating uh, $20 there to the we go. Yeah, 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 too. There we go. Up. Fifty dollars to the Wounded Warrior Project, so we appreciate the uh, the follow. And that actually, we we're talking about the recharging health. I think it was actually multiplayer that caused a lot of recharging health too. Just so like every gunfight was fair, like it was kind of a multiplayer convention that. Oh damn! You know, so it wasn't like that way. You weren't. Cause there was always the thing of like if there was armor or health packs, people would spawn guard them, and then it'd be really hard to right. kill them because they'd always be coming back to life. Um, so like the recharging allowed people to kind of always be on the same health level, and I think then that spread into single player. Um, even though it maybe doesn't make the most sense for a single player game, so people can just hide behind cover for a little bit and then keep inching forward. Um, and that's why you've seen I think a lot of games using health pack models and other things for single player again. Whereas this game uses a health pack model for single player and then switches to the classic recharging health uh, mm -hmm. when you're playing uh, competitive. Like everything goes in cycles, man. Doom's back. Doom, Wolfenstein, yeah, yep. for sure, for sure. And those games feel very different. It's fun. It's fun to have variety in shooters. They don't all need to play yeah. like aim down sight. For sure. Realistic. Yeah. Like it's fun to have different games and uh, different styles. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Doom twenty sixteen was the first Doom for me, and man, it was so freaking fun and visceral. Just running around those arenas, just like bah, glory killing those guys. Oh my god. Yeah, it was good to be. Reunited with Wolfenstein too. Uh, Logan one one nine four said, "What do you guys prefer, story or gameplay or both?" Ooh. I put that back. Chat. What do you guys prefer? Do you like story or gameplay or both? Um, I like both. Yeah. Why can't you have both? Why can't you have a good story but gameplay is grounded in story? Yeah. Well, why can't you do both? Well, and the whole point, it's a game. Like the game has, it's right. it's got to be compelling, but you need a story that for sure helps drive you through it. Mm -hmm. I think definitely working in Marvel right now, you know, like it has to be both. You know, story's critical and everything for Marvel. All Marvel universes, you gotta have a lot of story and storytelling and things need to happen for story reasons. But at the same time, gameplay has to be great. You gotta be able to swing around the city really well as Spider Man. You gotta be able to have, you know, Spider Man esque combat where you're able to be that, you know, acrobatic improviser. So there's all these yep. sort of things that, um, or I think we as a studio have always been very much about having both involved. I think in some ways we've been a very, we've had a gameplay first mentality a lot of times where story is, we yep. still have a good story, but we, you know, we'd always pick gameplay as the first thing we're working on. Sure. Um, but I think it's both, and I think we, you know, we've definitely had a huge emphasis on the story for Spider Man 2 to go along with that gameplay. Oh man, walked right into that one. I know. Classic Call of Duty. Kill Striker says depends on the game. Both is the easy answer. Ugh. Lots of people saying both. I have Beast Blood says gameplay. Hip Hop Anonymous six seven seven says all of the above. Um, like I said, we got a few minutes left in the stream. As long as this uh, death match continues, so another five and a half minutes, maybe, maybe a little less, given that the red team is. Oh, um, what was that? Blown oh, us. Oh, 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 damn. Man, it moved the whole track. Self guided bombs of World War Two, huh? <laughs> Remaster Resistance favorite song from the Police. Are you just asking that oh, because man. Patrick works here? Yeah, don't stand so close to me. I don't know. Uh, Roxanne, I guess. Oh, no, Roxanne. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say uh, synchronicity. Mm. Anastasia, can you do a video store of the studio? Uh, maybe at some point. There are they do exist out there. They have been done before. Yes. Uh, which is probably why we don't do them very often because they do exist, and I'm certain over the course of Spider-Man's campaign, we'll probably do another one, or someone will do another one. Uh, we might just have to get a gimbal and uh, walk through the studio, like through one of the like a Friday lunch one time, maybe. Yeah, That'd be cool. we'll be doing some live video tomorrow night from the 15th anniversary celebration of Ratchet and Clank, which is happening here in Los Angeles. If you're in the LA area, come on out. We'll be at Gallery Nucle Nucleus from 7 to 10 p.m. And uh, oh, 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 you I got, got him! Nice. nice. And, uh, so we'll be there. Uh, like I said, from 7 to 10 should be a fun time. We're really looking forward to it. There'll be door prizes for the first 150 people. Um, lots of good stuff there. So if you're in LA, come out and hang out. If not, keep an eye on our social media channels because we will be doing some live video from it. Um, and I guess I have Beast Blood. It's your studio Spider-Man theme now, posters and stuff. I think it will be more and more as we get more of that stuff. 
There's mm-hmm. not a lot of Spider-Man right. posters and things at this point yet. So I think we're just about to wrap up here. Last chance to follow and get those donations in for the Wounded Warrior Project. So if you haven't clicked the follow button, please click that button. We've got three great shows next week. We'll be playing Horizon Zero Dawn, Frozen Wilds on Monday. We'll be playing um, uh, Resistance 3 with creative director Marcus Smith on Wednesday. Star Wars Battlefront 2 on Friday. Um, any last thoughts from you guys, Brian, Shane, anything? No, man. Happy to be here. First stream for me, so. Yeah. It's awesome to have you yeah, on man. the show. Appreciate it. Hit that follow button. Donate yep. to Wounded Warriors. Oh, and we got kicked off the servers anyway, so Thank perfect. you to all the veterans out there. If yep. you are a veteran and uh, yeah. here yeah, with thank us you. on the stream, thank you for your service. And, yep. uh, and we have some veterans here in the studio. Yep. I don't know if, uh, Michael, Nestor, yep. Roger, and Jason out of our North Carolina studio. Uh, I think we've got... All the armed forces covered. I know we've got we've got Air Force, Army, and Marines, so Navy. Uh, although they would absolutely that's a way to surefire way to start a fight. You just yeah. lump uh, Marines and Navy. Well, together. you know we can count our retired CFO Ransom. Oh, he that's right. Navy. That's he was right, a Navy man. That's right. So and, uh, uh, I think he's still honorary you, since he retired from Insomniac. We get to count. What do you think the chances of Ransom's watching this stream right now? Zero. <laughs> Absolutely zero. <laughs> we miss you, Ransom. Uh, yeah, and we did got forty-two follows today during the stream, so that's two thousand one hundred dollars for the Wounded Warrior Project. Thank you guys for watching. We'll be back on Monday at two p.m. Pacific. We'll be playing. Horizon Zero Dawn, the Frozen Wilds DLC expansion, and we're excited to play through that. We'll have Lindsay Thompson here, who's been on the stream before, and somebody else we'll figure out today who's going to be on. So looking forward to that. Justin will be manning the stream, and uh, it'll be a good time. So thank you guys for coming and playing. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for all the follows and all the that help us donate to the Wounded Warrior Project. And thanks again to Sledge Hanemer Games for stopping in and to the folks at Step 3 PR for the code. And, and Justin and Corey, too. Yeah, thank you guys mm-hmm. for running the stream back there, and uh, we'll see you guys on Monday.